Hi. Welcome, Holly. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. So today, um, as all of you know, I've been knee deep and living my life um, in this leadership training. And I, I met amazing human beings with very big visions in this. And one of the most um, outstanding visions was reimagining the way that we learn in school and with a very big vision. And I'm going to um, have her share what it is, but it struck me because I never even thought outside the box, that there could be a, never, a different possibility, another way to absorb something. And if you're anything like me and have had to help either a niece, nephew, or if you have children, your own children, math these days is completely different <laughs> than how I learned it in school. So I remember I was helping my nephew with homework and to go look it up on YouTube and come back. So things evolve over time. And so I hope that today we get to poke some curiosity as to what is another possibility in the way that we are bringing up the future generations to come that will lead our way. So <laughs> without further ado, Ms. Holly Yarbrough is the co-founder of Wonderstorm Academy. And Holly, why don't you share with people a little bit about um, what the Academy is and really how you came to this vision? Yeah, I would love that. So Wonderstorm Academy is my dream come true. <laughs> my husband and I have been curating this beautiful vision for a school that we wanted to create for our children for gosh, over a decade. And about a year ago, I was doing some research to figure out how to start my own micro school. And that really came about because of the pandemic. Our kids had been, everything had been completely shifted for them. Our children have been going through a small Montessori school for most of their life. And it's just been this beautiful learning experience for them. And then everything shifted when life got put online and they had to learn virtually. And what broke my heart in all of that was that we had fallen in love with the Montessori philosophy, which is very much dependent on the environment and the materials that the kids get to interact with. Mm -hmm. So when you put the students behind a screen and they're supposed to learn in the same way, but they don't have access to those materials, it just kind of rips the magic away from that way of learning. Yeah. And so it didn't work for me anymore. It was very clear to me that I got to figure something else out. And we didn't know when the pandemic was going to go away. And here we still are in it. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so I knew that I got to create something different for them. And so I started looking into creating a micro school, which for those of you who are not familiar with what a micro school is, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's a very small school. So what that would look like is bringing in a teacher or I myself was going to step into that role and then finding children in the community who were interested in learning in a similar way and bringing everybody into one space and leading them through their school day. And so it was gonna look like, you know, a group of maybe five to 15 students, something like that. And as I'm researching it, I keep seeing the name Acton come up, Acton Academy, Acton Academy. And you know, when you see something a few times, you pay, pay attention. attention. And so <laughs> I clicked on it. And I dove in head first and fell in love. And I could not believe how aligned this schooling system was with this vision that my husband and I had been curating for so many years. In fact, after I read about it, I ran in, knocked on the door and got him out of the shower. And like, you've got to, you've got to hear about this school. And so I start telling him about it. And he's just like, no way it are it already exists someone was in wow. our head and created what we were wanting to create and so of course we found out everything we get to do in order to become an acton school and let me just tell you what i fell in love with about this program what i fell in love with is their their main mission is that they believe that every child is on a hero's journey and that every child has innate gifts and talents inside of them that can be blossomed to their full potential so that they can find their calling and truly change the world. Even when I say that now, my, I'm covered in goosebumps yeah. 
because it's, it's, it's how I feel about myself. It's how I see every single child I interact with. We are all born with this incredible light inside of us. And my experience of the education system as it currently stands is that the light is dimmed, that the creativity and the imagination and the individuality is sucked out of us. And we come out as these cookie cutter, almost like assembly line created versions of humans that the light has just been put out Mm -hmm. and it breaks my heart. And I don't want that for my kids. I want my children and every child within my reach and beyond to be able to follow what lights them up. You know, I, I don't, I have never met any human who is exactly like one other human. We are individuals, we are unique and it's beautiful and magical and we get to celebrate that. And so just that one simple sentiment that they see these children as heroes on a journey to find their calling and change the world. And I get to be part of that. I get to guide them through that process. Yep. Sign me up. I'm in. (laughs) So I love that. that. Yeah. So beautiful. I mean, how, how aligned is that with the journey that we have both been together (laughs) (laughs) and we're adults. Imagine if we were put in an environment as children Mm -hmm. where that was being blossomed from the very first years of our life, where would we be today? You know, Holly, we, we have learned obviously through our training, um, that, we become conditioned as adults. We, we get, we receive conditioning, um, through the way that we're brought up through our experiences in schools, any people of influence, teachers, mentors, bosses. Um, then we move on into our careers. There's influence there. If we had religion of our lives, there is that conditioning. Um, if we were in a subset group of, of a certain ethnicity or culture, Uh, There's that level of conditioning. And so it's like all these masks that we wear, right? And so we do so much work as adults to sit here and tear the mask aside. And what I'm hearing you say is the whole goal of the school is to see that young child as that amazing, great being that they already are. We do so much work to like get back to, (laughs) right? Because we don't, we don't change to become someone else. We actually uncover who we truly are on the inside and you are fostering and educating in a way that holds their core self and their essence up as a center, right? And so I can only imagine, obviously I can't predict or guarantee, but I can see the vision that as they grow up, they will take on less of those layers. It doesn't mean that they won't choose a religion. It doesn't mean that they won't love that they're me, Mexican and black, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or whatever their ethnicity or culture is, they can embrace it without choosing to take on meaning that is not them. Things that are not of them. And I love that. What is the hope that if they grow up this way, what do they get to create as adults? They get to create things that will cause massive impact, massive positive impact in the world. These are going to be our innovators. These are going to be the next leaders. Yeah. These are going to be world changers. I mean, yeah. when you allow children to think outside the box and be in a space where you're not in competition with the people around you the only person you're competing with is the version of you that you were yesterday Mm -hmm. you're just working to be better and better each day sky's the limit on what you get to create in your lifetime what a magical journey that is yeah and i'm just thinking like if you didn't have to people please and as a teenager right you weren't afraid to if you didn't have to show anybody up compete you didn't, if you felt good enough, like what could you have even done then to have a voice to use that powerfully? Um, And I'm going to go ahead and declare, we don't have to wait till they're adults to see what greatness they're going to create. Some of these kids are going to go off and be young entrepreneurs. Um, Some of them might become young influencers. Some of them might invent things at this young age, because if we don't have 
all those things, um, they literally are, their creativity is expanded. Mm-hmm. Possibilities expanded. Absolutely. And just to speak into that a little bit, mm-hmm. another thing that I absolutely adore about this program is mm-hmm. that there are two huge components that I have always thought absolutely need to be part of an educational experience for children. And that is developing entrepreneurial skills mm-hmm. and leadership development. Mm-hmm. So super, super important. And just to give a little sampling of both for the entrepreneurial skills, there is a seven week session out of the year where we do a deep dive into what it means to be an entrepreneur. How do you come up with a vision for something and take it from a thought to something that you've actually created in the world? And then how do you create a business plan around it and market yourself and show up with powerful communication and actually turn it into a profitable business? And we create that by taking them through this seven week session that's all themed around entrepreneurialism. And then we end with a career fair. And it's this beautiful, isn't it amazing? It's this beautiful pop-up at a park and we invite the whole community. We do, you know, the, the tables with the banners and the whole thing. And we bring everybody in, mom, dad, grandma, neighbors, everyone. And we will have vendors come in and it's just this beautiful opportunity because these kids get to try on this role that, where do you see that happening in the world? Like you don't see that. You have the rare, you know, kid pop up every now and then that wants to get paid two bucks to take your trash in and out every trash day. But this is, this is a gem. Closest thing I can imagine is like the, the little mini chefs on, on Food Network. (laughs) They're like, yeah. they're like food geniuses, right? <laughs> and can rival an adult, but they have been given a stage to come and show off their skills and the respect and the space and the, um, the admiration of who they are as, I mean, they treat them, they are the chef and, and they create greatness. Um, and that's just a TV show with a thing. I can't imagine that this would be, they would be immersed in this environment and brought up, what are the grades that you're going to have at the school? So it's going to be serving 18 months to eighth grade. And that's for now. I am, I have visions of creating what's called Launchpad, which is the high school version Mm -hmm. of Acton. And my main motivating driver for that is that I have an eighth grade son and I'm creating this school first and foremost for my children. Mm -hmm. And he's just six months away from stepping into his ninth grade year. And I get to create that for him. And just because I think that the question might be out there, is this in person? Is there a virtual component in person? This is 100% in person. Um, And it is offered. It's not just, I, I am in South Orange County, California, and Acton has really like taken hold and there are so many schools opening up faster than I can count and um, I can even in the comments I will leave the Acton main website where Mm -hmm. you can go and search for a location and you can see all of the Actons in your area but they are across the globe now. So you'll be serving um, South Orange County families. Yeah awesome. Could even be someone who's um they commute to South Orange County for work, right? And definitely Mm -hmm. and drop off their children there. Um, That is beautiful. And it would be closer to their job. So (laughs) keep an eye on them. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. And I love that, that the first, um, we call them tiny humans here because I am a dog parent, Uh, but that the first students enrolled are, are first and foremost, your kids. And what I'm hearing you say is that you built this vision you created this vision with your kids in mind with your own little girl that you were you know in mind of what she would have gotten to have and if you could create an an environment for your own little girl like what would that be and that's this and so it doesn't get any better than that doesn't get any more personal than that it doesn't get any more um innovative (laughs) than that creative um, and specialized than that. 
So I love, love your vision. I love what you're creating. I love your reason for it. Um, you used to be a teacher as well. Yeah. <laughs> so Still, I'm will always be. She will always be a teacher. <laughs> um, but moving into, yeah, creating something powerful. How many of us, even in the job force, see an opportunity for something and maybe don't speak up, but here you are creating it, not just speaking up, but creating it, yeah. creating change. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Are there you. any final um, thoughts you'd like to share with people on the school? Hmm. I mean, I could talk to you about this for days. And <laughs> I, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the thing mm -hmm. that um, is just really, really, there's so many things that are so powerful about it, but what I'm noticing with young children today is that they are lacking a lot of life skills. We mm -hmm. might be filling them up with tons of academic information and they sure are getting social and emotional development out on the playground or even interacting with their peers collaboratively in the classroom. But what's missing is developing those life skills that are so, so crucial. Yeah. And I love so much that it is a core piece of the Acton schooling way. Mm -hmm. And what specifically what I mean by that is just like you were talking about the, the kid chefs, there might <laughs> be a unit where we are just solely focusing on how to utilize tools in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Because you would be surprised how many children have never prepared a meal for themselves. And you would be shocked and delighted mm -hmm. to see how lit up children get when you give them the space and the freedom and the trust to pick up a knife and chop themselves some vegetables and make themselves a nice soup from scratch that they get to enjoy and share with their peers. And it was made 100% by them. Yeah. You so are cool. empowering them for a lifetime. Yeah, definitely. Everything that you've shared today to me screams empowerment. It's, it's giving them the space to be who they are. It's um, developing the unique parts of themselves, the unique skill. You know, as, as adults on our journey now, we can see in retrospect how we were always meant to be or do this thing that we have because we have these unique gifts. Um, some people call it purpose, some people call it a calling, mm -hmm. but that they get to develop that and have that at this age, because part of the conditioning and the programming that we take it on is you go to school, you get good grades, you go off to a good college, you do that, you go to a job, you work for somebody, it's changing now with the pandemic, yeah. but you know, and then you work forever and then you retire. And that, that model is being not just changed at the career level, but now at the, the early, early education stages, which is, yeah. it's, it's mind blowing. It absolutely mind blown. So you asked me if there's something I want to leave everybody with and there is something just came up and I just really want to share it. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, seeing everybody as as if they are on their hero's journey and that's not just the children, every single one of us, you and I both are on our own hero's journey. And what I want to say is going through this process when I look back from that moment where I first realized I get to create a school to now being three weeks away from stepping into day one of our school being in operation, I can see how all I had to do was stay clear on what lights my soul on fire, like what truly makes me light up and just feel so alive yeah. and so happy and so on purpose. And just really like follow that, follow that passion because that, is the true gift that you're meant to give to the world. And that is what's going to leave a lasting legacy where people will remember you when you are long gone for the amazing gift that you left behind because you had the courage to face your fears because man, are there a ton of them as you're on this journey. <laughs> Even after the door. Oh my open. goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but have the courage to face those fears because when you face the fears, you come out stronger and more powerful, yeah. your life becomes more beautiful and your dreams are manifested and it's incredible. And the biggest gift for me has been that my children have watched their mom 
go through this whole process. And I know now that they're going to be more prone to face their deepest, darkest fears to bring their biggest and boldest visions to life. I love that. I have one last powerful question for you before we get into the logistics. To the mom who's out there who may be watching this, who this is something maybe she had never considered, um, been struggling with the pandemic, kids are in school, they're, oh, they're back home, <laughs> you know, it's virtual and, you know, the kids are getting Zoom fatigued and lacking the social interaction, all that stuff. But she's doubting herself, not knowing if this is the right move, not knowing to trust that that this radical difference in a way of approaching education might work for her child. Wondering if she, what if she makes the wrong move? What do you tell her right now? That you get to trust yourself, that you get to follow your heart. And if you're feeling a pull towards learning more, that is your first clue. Here we go. So if anything that we have shared here that Holly has shared with you about uh, the school, the vision, where it came from, her why, her own personal story, if something caused you to even be watching to this point <laughs> in the video, if you're still watching, um, our invitation is for you to reach out, reach out. So Holly, how can they do that? Where can they go to get more information? How can they connect with you? Yeah, so if you would like more information about our specific program, Wonderstorm Academy, located in South Orange County, you can go to www.wonderstormacademy.com. Mm -hmm. If you would like to reach me personally, you can find me on Facebook, Holly Yarbrough. It's Y-A-R-B-R-O-U-G-H, and I believe I'm tagged in here. Um, and yeah, just send me a direct message or send me an email from the website and I would be more than happy to deepen this conversation with anybody who would like to explore it further. Love it. Love it. Um, uh, lastly, the date, when does it start? When does enrollment begin? Yes. So we are doing a soft opening on February 1st and a full blown launch fall of 2022. Awesome. There we go. All mm -hmm. right. So just reach out to Holly and um, we can't wait to have your kids be the start of a generation that gets to be more powerful than what we've ever seen or even ever imagined. Thank you, Holly, for being so candid, for being so open Thank and um, for sharing your story with us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>